everyone, Dave Landry of DaveLandry.com. A couple of weeks back, I did an update on the market, and then in that update, I showed the fact that we had a signal looming, a sell signal looming in the S&P 500. Since then, the signal has completed. We haven't gotten a trigger yet, but we do have the signal. Now, before we get to that, I want to bring up a few other concepts and show you a few other things that are going on in the market right now. First, the concepts. Ideally, when a market is trending, you want to see it stair step higher. You want to see it thrust A, B, pull back, rinse, and repeat. In fact, we actually use this propensity to our advantage. Those corrections are very important and healthy for our market. We look to get in after the correction. In other words, we trade pullbacks. You don't want to see a market thrust, pull back, and then thrust again, just barely get past where it, it ran up to, and then pull back to its prior pullback. In other words, B should always be greater than B. It should, again, stair step higher or should make boxes on top of boxes a la Darvis style. The other thing to look for is overhead supply when trading a market. These slides are straight from my stock selection course, by the way, and I'll talk a little bit about, more about that in just one second. Overhead supply is simply an area where a lot of people have likely bought a market. People tend to buy, if there's a range of trading, you know there's a lot of trading that's happened during that range. If the market drops below it, people will be looking to get out at break even. See last week's day ledgers, the weekly charts for more on that. The other thing to look for in markets is the simplest of all technical analysis. Ask yourself, where's the price today? Where was the price a week ago, several weeks ago, several months ago, and even a year ago? So in other words, take a look at the net net change and ask yourself, is the market higher, lower, or about the same? Notice the market was pretty much about the same for most of 2015, and recently we have obviously dropped sharply. On a net net basis, the shot, the, the drop, excuse me, is a little bit more than 12%, so that's certainly significant. Now we have a, a, mount, uh, a, a mountain of overhead supply to get through in the overall market. Again, there's nothing magical about this form of technical analysis. It's just simply a level where people will likely be looking to get out at break even. Now, the other thing is I was talking about earlier, the pullbacks, the prior pullbacks. Notice that we have a TKO on a monthly chart. TKO, for those of you who don't know, is my favorite pattern, or one of my favorite patterns, it's called a trend knockout. You're looking for a market and a nice short trend to have a big knockout move. And that knockout move attracts in eager shorts. It also knocks out the nervous logs. It can often clear the way for the market to trade higher. Well, notice on a monthly chart, we had a really cool signal coming after a nice persistent trend, but the market really didn't follow through much from then. So notice that the next area, which looks like another TKO, is not actually a TKO because it pulled back into that prior pullback, as I discussed earlier. Now, this is the important thing and the reason why I'm doing this update is we now have an official bow tie sell signal. We don't have a trigger just yet, but we do have a signal. The trigger would be if we take out these multi-week lows in here. Now the significance of this is when you have a major signal like this off of all time highs, it can signal the beginning of a major bear market. If you go back to 2000, you'll notice that the market sold off about 40 something percent from that bow tie. And same thing happened in 2008. In fact, at its lows, it was down more than 50% from that signal. So very important to pay attention to that. Another concept to watch out for is daylight. Daylight is simply the highs are less than the moving average. And on the upside, the lows would be greater than the moving average. If you notice on the chart, for most of 2000, or since 2013, I should say, most of the time the market has had positive daylight. In fact, you can go all the way back to 2000, and you can see that for most of the time, the market has had positive daylight above its 200-day moving average. Now it's beginning to have negative daylight, meaning the highs are less than the moving average. The longer this happens, just like the overhead supply, the longer this daylight stays there, the longer it stays under the overhead supply, the more important these concepts become. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the death cross that the media is getting all excited about. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it doesn't necessarily test out, meaning that you don't want to buy a market when it crosses above or when that moving average crosses a low sell market, but it can help to keep you on the right side of the market. The last time we had a death cross was in 2008, and the market dropped about 55% from that signal. If you go way back in time and take a look at like the Dow in the 20s, the late 20s and early 30s, you'll see that it dropped about 81% from the death cross back then. Now, so what do we do? Well, my initial reaction to this 
is it's for safer by clients as it is for by self. Do no harm. Prenum non nocere. Hopefully I got that right. My Latin's a little rusty. And basically that's the doctor's creed, the Hippocratic Oath, saying that first thing you want to do is, is not do any harm and then see how you can benefit from this situation. So what I would recommend you do is honor your stops on any leftover loans that you may have. Even if you're a longer term investor, take a look at what you're still in and see if it's going up or see if it's going down, obviously. Take a look at that net net change once again and have a spot in place where you will be willing to exit. Uh, over the last few months, the markets have slowly weeded us out of all our positions to where we were mostly flat. In fact, we only had one position on during this last little sell-off. So that's kind of a nice thing to have happen. Uh, be super selective and you want to seek out inefficiencies. By inefficiencies, I'm saying stocks. I mean stocks that can move contra to the overall market or uh, can make large moves in spite of the overall market headed the other way. Uh, right now, there's a few IPOs, but there's not much out there. In fact, the market has gotten so choppy that there's really not a whole lot of setups on either side of the market. The other thing you might want to do is look for commodity related areas such as the energies and golds and metals and mining. See if they're bottoming out. In fact, they are bottoming out, but it looks like it's going to be more of a process than an event. On the short side, you want to short stocks that are higher level, at, are at higher levels. Easy for me to say. Like the overall market as opposed to shorting those stocks that are already extended downtrend such as the golds and metals and mining and the aforementioned energies. In fact, we're actually, again, looking for a bottom there. Don't rush out and buy those stocks just yet, but look for them to bottom over the next several weeks to maybe even months. Now, the other thing is be super selective no matter what you do. Again, uh, or as I mentioned earlier, alluded to, I have a stock selection course where I spent 14 hours talking about how to pick stocks. A lot of these charts, a lot of these figures, I should say, came directly from that course. Uh, no matter what you do, make sure you wait for an entry, meaning that the market must be in, in, uh, moving in your intended direction by market. I mean stock uh, in, in particular. If you're looking at a particular stock, make sure it triggers an entry by moving in the intended direction. And the other thing too, once you're triggered, auto your stops just in case. For now though, I think you might want to sit on your hands a little bit and just, again, be very, very selective. Any questions, Dave at DaveLandry.com. Best of luck with your trading today.